before and outside. So let's see if I have any leaks or how many leaks I have. Looks dry as a bone up here. Oh, I got a leak right there. I don't know where the heck that's coming from. I think that's a leak. I can't tell. Roof's leaking. Oh, that's not good. Didn't see that coming. Corners look good, remember? It's that area right up in here I'm gonna have to fix. A little bit of a leak right here. I guess that kind of comes with the territory being kind of like a tent. I didn't see that coming though. I gotta figure out what's going on with that. It's all dry up here. Alright. Of course this is gonna be wet down here because nothing's wow, something's really wet down here. I don't know where that came from. Probably up in here and it's just running down. That's probably what it is. Still got a ways to go, but yeah, it's not bad. I wish that wasn't there, but. All right. Well, come to the conclusion that the little white single cab is worth more without the bed. So I'm selling the bed and the tailgate. Trying to figure out how not to hurt myself by getting the bed off there. And I saw the swing set back there and I was like, that's the way to do it. So I'm going to rig up some ropes and uh, see if I can't just get that off there and make it easy on myself. The guy's coming from about two hours away. And even with three people, this thing would be a bear. Done a, uh, a small, ca uh, small bed, six foot bed, and it was pretty rough with four people. So. Um, I figure this is the best way. It looks like I have enough room. I think I'm gonna, I just have to figure if I got enough rope or not to do it. I'm recovering like at least 75% of what I have in this truck by selling the bed and the tailgate. And then, um, there's always an option. I may use the electronics out of this, this is, a, um, the two valve motor in here, which I really like. It's got less horsepower than the three valve, but you don't have nearly the problems with it. So, um, and this has got a good engine in it too. So this thing's unfortunately worth more disassembled than it is whole, which is like most uh, Ford trucks. So anyway, let me uh, let me see if we can rig this up where I can easily get this bed off this thing. Better come along. It's got a you know nice little clip right there where the won't fall off. There, that's what it looks like. Right, swing set is back to normal. We have unrecognified ourselves. Well, except for the uh, the bed liner. I should have told him to take that. But uh, anyway, I have to figure out what to do with that. I'm sure, there's a oh, I could cover stuff with that. Hmm. Anyway, pick up some tools. I'm about to get some rain here. I got a guy coming to get this uh, this bed, the uh, tailgate. So. And then I will have uh, most of my money back in this truck. And then I still have an engine and transmission. 
and a cab with a good title. Fairly good doors. Got a dent here. That fender's not worth much. And yeah, bumper's worth a little bit, not much. Today, I'm going to try to give you guys a little update on this Chinese uh, VCM2. It's um, the module that uh, that can read and write uh, like the Ford factory, you know, technicians use to uh, interface with your uh, PCM the module that controls your engine. And the reason I bought this and the original is like 1200 bucks and then you have to pay for licensing and all that kind of stuff and it gets super expensive but I wanted the diagnostic tools that this thing um, does so I got a cheap Chinese version I think I paid like a hundred bucks for this and um, getting it running on an old Windows XP laptop is kind of difficult I've got a three three day version of IDS software uh, that's the uh, Ford factory software where you can read the uh, ECM in the computer and be able to you know do diagnostics on it which is what I wanted to do so I'm going to show you how I used that today and what I found and all right the truck's a mess uh, I've got an old laptop I'm using for this and uh, it is worn out the battery doesn't work it just barely barely works but it'll get the job done it's when it running Windows at XP and hopefully you guys can see this on the camera um, I had to use Windows XP because I'm using an old version of uh, the IDS software from Ford. It has a three-day trial on it. I think it's version 86. Um, so I found a copy out there where I could use the three-day trial, which will um, help me um, diagnose what's wrong with this. I've got everything plugged up. This is uh, plugged into my OBD port. And then I've got that plugged into USB. And we can crank up the software. And the main reason I got this is so I could, you know, update the firmware on my PCM. And uh, so I could have the diagnostics that's available in here. See it missing a cylinder here. And my number two cylinder, I assume that that isn't the one that's not producing much power. One is low, two is low, three is high, eight is high. See, one and two are on the same side. Three is on the same side, four is on the same side. Four is just kind of hanging out over here. But it looks like uh, one is low, three is high, two is low, and four I'd say, you know, it's just probably normal. Yeah. Two is definitely not doing anything. Relative compression test. This will give me the health of my engine. Okay, parking brake applied. Apply neutral key on engine off fully depress the accelerator pedal to the floor wide open throttle and hold so you can hear the sound that it was making it was a did 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 in other words, uh, there was one cylinder that's not giving any compression, so that it spins faster during that time. And uh, we can tell, definitely tell where the problem area is. Number two. 
Um, I tested the injectors using this program also, and uh, they all tested okay. And the ignition uh, doesn't look like I'm getting any misfires. Um, basically, the number two cylinder is not producing any compression. So, that can be very expensive. It's not, you know, electronic. It's not uh, a fuel injector. Oh my gosh, look at these birds. All right, so I'm faced with an expensive repair for the engine, um, no matter how you look at it, but I've got options. And um, anyway, this is a really good tool for, you know, not a lot of money. I don't know if it'll end up ruining my um, my computer and my, my car or not, but um, for right now, it did the test I needed to do, and I got valuable information out of it, and uh, it's way less than expensive Ford um, uh, VCM2 and I'm not sure if it's got all the capabilities of a VCM2 but uh, for right now I was able to do what I needed to get done with this so you know uh, not all of them are the same either they have some of these that uh, do not have full capability or full, full functionality so you gotta be careful what you buy and there's something called a full chip and I'm I hope that's what I bought here but I'm not positive about it all I know is it, it did the job what I needed to get done so anyway I just want to show you guys where I stood on that um, I'm not a big fan of Ford's three valve motor it's got the variable uh, valve timing and a bunch of other complicated stuff and it produces more horsepower than a two valve for the same displacement but the two valves in my experience have lasted way longer that truck right here has got a 5.42 valve in it and it runs great. Let's go examine the options. I've been like going over this in my mind and, and uh, I'm not ready to pull the trigger on anything yet. <coughs> I've got all kinds of different ideas of what I can do. And uh, I'd love to hear you guys' opinions on, on what I got planned. But this is a definite go. I love the, uh, the camper on the service body. That's working out really well. And I'm probably gonna have to take it back off again uh, so that I can paint this up here and put this sheet of aluminum. Maybe I don't have to. I don't think I'd have to take it back off. But um, the plan is I'm going to build some plates right here. And it's going to bolt through here and bolt to here. That'll hold this on. Um, on the inside, I picked up some aluminum angle. It's kind of thin gauge, but I'm going to run that aluminum angle all up and down the sides and on the front. And that's going to secure it. Uh, you know left and right and up you know up and down so and i'm trimming up the aluminum here and anyway it's too rainy out here too messy so what we're gonna do today is concentrate on our engine uh repair options and you know what can be done um i think i got about seven different options here um, first option is to repair the head on the passenger side um I'm thinking that a head, a rebuilt head, is going to cost like $400. Um, it's going to be head, head gasket. Uh, that's probably going to be like $50. And then the bolts for it, it's going to be another $60, $70. Probably want to get in there and replace the timing chain and upgrade the tensioners and put an oil pump in it and all that stuff. So I'm, ta I'm talking probably anywhere from $1,000 to, uh, you know, maybe $1,500 if I get in there and try to repair the engine that's in it. Uh, another option, I could possibly take um, the uh, F-250 that you saw out there. I could take the engine out of that and all the electronics and everything and move that over to the other truck and bolt that in. Um, those are two different animals, really, because the two-valve motor is a, uh, it's got a cable. It's got a cable. The computer is different. The is different. Wiring is totally different in the truck. One truck, I think, has ABS, and the other truck does not have ABS. Um, I think I'd have to change out the dash wiring and all that kind of good stuff. Um, that was, you know, one option I was considering. Um, it's free for me to do that. I have all the wiring, and everything's there. It, the engine has got unknown mileage, so it's kind of a risk. It runs great, but it's still, you know, doing all that work and, you know, popping that in there. 
uh, for free, you know, it's not it's not that bad of a deal. But I really want to you know put the work into this thing one time and not have to worry about it. So um, I'm trying to go with the uh, most reliable and most inexpensive option that's uh, that's best for the truck and best for reliability. Um, if I went that route, I also have this uh, 2003 Ford Lightning motor that's in the basement and. Instead of using the engine out of the F-250, I could use all the wiring out of that F-250 and put it in the truck, and then I could put the lightning motor in there and, um, and wire it up that way. But I'm not a big, big fan of the supercharger. I think I'd rather go with a turbocharger. I, I think it's just a better setup for, for power um, and, you know, simplicity. Um, that's a possibility. Uh, so using the lightning motor, that would probably cost me like $1,500 because... Um, you know, that's about what that engine's worth to put in there. And then it also cost me the electronics out of the F-250. So that's kind of an expensive option too. And we're talking, you know, you know, close to $1,500 or so. Um, or I could just swap the service body and the camper part over to the F-250, which the F-250 doesn't have as much capability, but there wouldn't be any wiring issues. But then I lose the crew cab and I no longer have the ability to crew cab, which is kind of the purpose of it. And also, it won't be a stick anymore. It'll be automatic, which I'm, I'm okay with that. Um, I'd go either way with that. Um, that's a possibility. That would be free and maybe not, not as much work as swapping over the, uh, the engine. But then again, I'm faced with an engine with unknown mileage on it. And I, I know that that body has got... How much is that? That body's got 380,000 miles on it. So maybe not a good idea because I lose the crew cab, lots of miles on the body. And um, unknown, there's too many un unknowns in that equation. So I probably won't end up going that route. I could just go and buy a truck with low mileage on it and uh, swap the service body and camper uh, top over to that. And then you're talking eight to $10,000 for a decent truck. And that's not what I'm all about. Um, not unless I find a really good deal on one, and that's the only thing. And it would have to be a 2005 or newer, and then I'll end up with a three-valve motor again, and it's probably end up with the same problems. I really, I would, I really like having the 2005 uh, F250, F350, and up because it's got the coil spring front suspension instead of leaf spring. Rides a lot better. Turning radius is a lot sharper. Um, so I'd like to stick with 2005 up chassis but unfortunately when you do that you also end up with a three valve motor which you know if, if everything's taken care of you have a rebuilt one and you know you do all the you know heavy duty pump in it and you have the updated heads on it and uh, updated phasers and all that kind of stuff it's just an expensive motor to work on it really is to do it right you're looking you know uh, a rebuilt jasper motor um, is like four or five thousand dollars uh, if you do it yourself, you're going to end up almost as much, you know, with, with good quality parts and stuff like that. So that, that's just an expensive option, I'm telling you. Um, another option that I've looked at would be number six. Uh, with, uh, 2009, 2010, it's a 5.4 with all the latest upgrades. Uh, with 70,000 miles on I can get one for 2250 bucks. That is probably the best option if I stick with a three-valve, I'm thinking. Um, I've just, you know, bolted in and ready to go, maybe do some upgrades. I'm also thinking about, uh, the phasers on you know, the variable cam timing. You can eliminate that with some special programming and some, uh, you can lock the, can lock the phasers so that they're just like regular, um, regular cams and, uh, you don't get as much power and you lose some, uh, mileage on it, but you gain reliability. So that's an option I could do on that too. Uh, right now, that looks like probably the best bet. Um, there's one more option, and it's kind of crazy, and it's out there, but it is in the back of my mind. And it's it's not really that crazy because uh, Chevy LS motors are inexpensive, uh, they're reliable, and they make great horsepower. And I've got a truck with a ZF6 transmission in it. Um, the Chevy won't bolt you know, directly to the ZF6 that I have in the truck, but I can get rid of the ZF6 that I've got in there and get a Chevy ZF6 and engine and drivetrain 
and bolt it all in there. You know, maybe a lot of fabrication, but I know I, I uh, Chevy makes a really good motor, and I'm, I'm actually considering that and looking at that. So um, right now, um, in the lead, I'm thinking the 2009 5.4 with 70,000 miles on it. That's probably my best option. Um, I could try to fix what's in there, but I've got to replace the clutch in the thing anyway. So I'm going to end up having to pull the engine out. I might as well just stick a low mileage engine in it. And, you know, I would end up with almost as much money in it. So I'm going to check on that. And uh, I'm not going to do anything right away. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. And um, I'm not going to go back with a diesel. I would consider it maybe if I had a sponsor for some of the parts. And, um, you know, they wanted to, I would go with the manual transmission this time. And, uh, of course, the 6BT or the 24 valve and uh, P-pump. That would be my preferred way of, uh, of going. But um, that's also option eight. So I'd consider that. So of all those options, um, let me know what you guys think. And uh, let me see if you guys have any other options for me. But that's uh, a lot of different possibilities. And sometimes when you have this many options, you want to go slow so you make the right choice. And um, love to hear your thoughts on this. Thanks for watching. Hey, thanks for watching my channel. If you haven't subscribed already, uh, please do for future updates. Remember, build it. Don't buy it.